suppose any kind of comfort food would be considered the food of love if it's made by someone you love or someone who loves you. For me, it, uh, it would be this very simple dish that my mom used to make for us. Uh, it's, my mom's a really good cook, but sometimes uh, we just like the simpler stuff when we were kids. Uh, it's, it's this vegetable stew that she makes with potatoes, carrots, and onions stewed together for a couple of hours. And yeah, it's perfect for a rainy afternoon. It's my kind of food for love. Basically, I come from a family of cooks. My mom cooks, my cousins all cook, my aunties cook, my uncles all cook. Uh, my entire extended family cooks. And I'm probably about the only one in my family who doesn't cook. Well, I can cook enough to save my life, like fry an egg. And I think it, I made a conscious decision not to cook when I was younger so that I could appreciate all the food that my family cooks better. I think I'd rather not know what goes behind it or I'd rather be surprised and, you know, uh, enjoy the mystery of what goes into the cooking. Because I realized that, like, when my cousins all cook, they, don't, they hardly eat their own food. And I didn't want to end up like that. But I guess it's just a, an excuse not to learn how to cook. The, the best thing about cooking in bamboo is you get uh, the food actually soaks up all the taste of the, the inside of the bamboo. And uh, because you also line the bamboo, the inside of the bamboo with like uh, banana leaves and all that. So it, during the cooking, it actually soaks up all the, the ingredients within the bamboo and the banana leaf. And it actually makes the, makes the meat inside more tender for some reason. So it's very easy to eat uh, whatever you cook in a bamboo. Like back home, back in Sarawak, we generally don't buy veggie or even our own rice because we plant our own rice and vegetables are just planted uh, around the house. So we go pick up tapioca leaves, ferns, um, kangkong, which is just in the long kang, you know, uh, and then uh, cangkok manis, okay? That's uh, one of my favorite, uh, personal favorite uh, veggies. And my mom cooks with all these ingredients we can find at home and so much so that when she comes over sometimes she actually brings uh, some of the veggie instead of buying it here she brings it all the way from Sarawak to KL and cooks it here. I love her cooking, I love her food so much that when I'm out of the house, when, when she's here and I'm out away at work for instance if I'm shooting um, of course we have our food on location so for lunch I would eat on location reluctantly knowing that my mom's back home cooking her stuff but I would actually wait, of course we'd say if we're shooting till 10 or 11 at night, I would skip dinner altogether on location knowing that we'll be wrapping around about 10, 11, and I'd wait for the wrap and head home and actually rather heat up the food she, she cooked for lunch or dinner and eat that. So I would actually wait and ditch food on location, go back home to eat my mom's food without fail. I guess the safest way to do it is to ask your partner or date what she likes, her interests, get to know her first. If she, you know, if she likes a certain kind of food, then probably the, the second date you bring her out, you surprise her with the food that she likes. So because I, I've heard stories about you know, you know, people taking the risk, surprising the partner, the date with like fancy food and whatnot. It, but if say for instance you bring someone out for Japanese food and she doesn't like it, so there goes your date. So the safest way is you know, to get a little bit of information before you, know, you go out with the, the, the person. At the same time, I'm quite a laid-back person. You know? I, I, I like to go to you know, mamak stall, street food and whatnot. So if my partner or my date is okay, is comfortable, is comfortable with that, then I know it will be a perfect date for me and hopefully for my date as well. Because uh, at the end of the day, you just want someone you know, who can, you know, can, who can live with your imperfections or your flaws. Because I think that's what love is. So if she's okay with going to the mama like every day <coughs> with me, sorry, that would be perfect for me, yes. Okay, what food and sex have in common? Well, very obvious. It takes you by surprise. <laughs> no, it really does. I mean, uh, even if you cook a dish that you're so good at, every time you cook it, I find that it'll come out slightly different. So it's not too way the same. So just like sex as well. Even if you are having it with the same person, not every time it's the same. And also, it's, how would I say, cooking is so personal. Because when you cook, you put your emotions in it. And it's the same thing with sex as well. 
if you want the dish to come out good, if you want it to come out good, you got to put your emotions, you got to put your feelings, and you got to work at it. I think it's like you know being on a trampoline. You know, you jump, and with each time you jump higher, you get more excited. And it's the same thing with cooking. The more you cook, the more you get excited. The more your flavors will come out. Yeah. So it's the same with sex as well. If you want to be good at it, you got to do it more often, and then you'll be perfect. It's like a good casserole. If you do it bad, it'll get burned.